Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. news in the streets join us and tune in for the tea breaking news with integrity so sir your friends and your family it's the lovely tv show bringing you good tea and good vibes it's the lovely tv show be sure to share like and subscribe we got some big dick white deviants and you know the crazy thing is mr beast has seen his friend's peen and said it was big so, uh, what's his name? Chris, Ava Chris. Chris Ava Tyson. Mr. Beast uh, confirmed that he had a big one in a bunch of like leaked messages from their Discord. I think all these fools are just, they're warped. There's something wrong with them. So let's go ahead and talk about this Mr. Beast situation. It's very, very disturbing. Now, I'm going to say this. I don't watch Mr. Beast. I'm not a kid, so I don't, I'm not into Mr. Beast's content. Um, but as somebody who, who's a, you know, content creator on this platform, I thought it's pretty dope. Like, okay, this dude is doing all types of cool, you know, videos. He's giving back to the poor. You know, he's giving blind people their eyesight. He's buying people homes and giving them cars. You know, but I'm not going to lie. The name Mr. Beast always bothered me. Because I kind of felt like, damn, we went from having the biggest person on YouTube being Fred. And Fred made, you know, these kid videos and ran around like he was crazy. To now the biggest person on YouTube is Mr. Beast. And it always reminded me of the Mark of the Beast. You know what I'm saying? In the Bible. The end of days. It's like, how come out of all names, his name is Mr. Beast? And y'all can say, oh, well, it's, you know, you're reading too deeply into it, but... This man, Mr. Beast, has a lot of influence on the youth. It's chill. He has a children's channel. His, his content is geared towards children and teenagers. It's not really geared towards older people. I don't, I don't, not saying because I don't watch him. I'm, you know, I'm sure there's some older people who watch him, but most older people, 30 and up, 20, I would even say 25 and up, are not really checking for Mr. Beast on a consistent basis. It's mainly young people. So when these allegations came out, they're very disturbing. And let me keep it all the way real, because I wrote this on Instagram. And I really didn't want to go back and forth because I was getting ready, you know, for vacation. I'm packing. I'm not going back and forth with commentators. But what I'm but I'm gonna address it now on camera. Um, because what I don't like is any time that somebody from the trans community is being held accountable for bad behavior, um, all of a sudden you get accused of transphobia or told, oh, well, you really shouldn't say this because trans people are dying. I understand that, but I'm not going to hide my feelings about a situation. You know what I'm saying? You got black people who are out here dying too. Does that mean that I should not hold black people accountable when they've done things wrong? You got white folks out here who die every day. Does that mean I should not hold them accountable? You know what I'm saying? So that's my thing. Like, like, let, let's stop with the shaming. Like, I, you can't shame me. You, you just can't. You know what I'm saying? You can try, but I, I, the shaming tactics don't work over here. You know what I'm saying? So how I feel about somebody and their actions is how I feel about them. And so for me, I've never been a fan of Chris, Ava, whatever he wants to call himself, because what bothered me with this whole situation was when he just, you know, out the blue transition. Let's keep it real. This was a married man, okay? He was 24 years old. His wife was 21. So this is a young woman who not only was married to him, they had a very small child, okay? And to me, the way he went about it was trifling, okay? You're married, you're a husband, and you're a father. And you just decide one day, I just want to be a woman, I'm getting divorced, I'm moving on. And just start a whole new life. And this is all being done in front of children. So once again you know, not respecting the so-called sanctity of marriage, treating it like a game and a joke. You know, nobody ever, everything was about Mr. Beast and, and uh, Ava's comfort. You know, even Mr. Beast came out when, uh, who was that? Was that Sunny Vale? When he was like, Ava's going to be a problem for Mr. Beast? Is going to be Mr. Beast's mistake? Mr. Beast co-signing this? And then Mr. Beast tried to come out and go off. And said that, you know, 
anybody who said it was saying something bad about Ava was basically transphobic. Yeah, here goes the article. He was going hard for his friend. I mean, it's his friend, so he has a right to go hard for him. But anybody who had an opinion was automatically, you know what I'm saying, shut down and accused of transphobia. When a lot of people were like, nah, that it's not cool the way he's going about it. And so I believe it was, I don't, it was Sunnyvale. He'd be making them, um, them documentaries. He does these documentaries. And he was basically calling out Chris at the time. And Mr. Beast got mad. Let me find that. Here it is. He says, yeah, it's getting absurd. Chris isn't my nightmare. He's my fucking friend. And things are fine. All this transphobia is starting to piss me off. He said that in April of last year. Now we fast forward to Leo season of this year. And I bet you now, Chris is your, night is your nightmare. I bet you you feeling away now. Sunny Val. Yes, yeah, Sunny, uh, I'm sorry, Sunny V2. Thank, I keep calling him Sunny Val. Sunny V2. Thank you, uh, Livy. Yep, Sunny V2. Yep. Um, he he did like a, a documentary, not like a like a docu-series, kind of. He does like full-length, you know, breakdown videos. So he did one on this situation. So Mr. Beast got mad because he was saying, is Chris going to be Mr. Beast's nightmare? And Mr. Beast got upset. But now we fast forward a year later and he is. He got you in a lot of mess. So what I have wrote on Instagram let me share my screen. When this first came out, because I, I didn't really have time to dig into it, but I wrote this. I said, I'm not shocked. This is the same attention whore who left his wife and small child to transition. Clown emoji, okay? And again, that was not like shade towards people who are really, you know what I'm saying, transitioning and are really going through it. I didn't feel this vibe from this person. To me, this felt like somebody who is cosplaying a character who just wants to do something for attention and who is dealing with his sexuality. This never came off to me as like a sincere transition. It just didn't. Because if he was feeling this way, why was you even married? Why even bring that young girl through that? And I just didn't like how, yeah, it, it came off to me as clout chasing and because, you know, this is like the, the cool thing to do now. When you got people who are really transitioning, who really feel like they were born in the wrong body, I never got that vibe from this person. And y'all can say that that's transphobic, that whatever. I never got that vibe from this person. It always came off to me as like play, you know, like playing dress up and attention seeking. And I stand by that. So if you're offended, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Because I know real people that I've met who are really trans and that's not really even the way they went about it. So to me, it just seemed, it, it, it seemed weird. It just seemed weird, the whole thing. And so, and I, I just didn't like the way how it was like, oh, you just got to support this. And if you don't, then that's not cool. But I'm like, well, damn, what about the young wife? She's a baby. She's 21 years old. Is anybody checking on her as a woman? I wouldn't know what, you know, I wouldn't know how that would make me feel as a 21 year old that my husband just out the, you got grown women who wouldn't be able to deal with that. But it's like all of a sudden his wife was just a non-factor to like all the fans. And it was all about Ava, Chris's comfort. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Fuck the wife. She'll get over it. This is who he is now. So I, I didn't like how social media played that. You know what I'm saying? And so, um... It's just, it's been a lot of stuff that's been coming out about this man. And I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. So let's go ahead. We're going to watch this video because. Okay, before I play the video, because some more stuff broke today, earlier today about Mr. Beast. It's so much going on. It's a lot to break down. Let me pull up all these, all my, all my clips here. Because Mr. Beast is trying to distance himself from Ava Chris, but I think it's a bit too late. Okay, so this was a young man, Nathan. He came out to first talk about the story 
because the other boy, Lava, and y'all might have to help me with some of these names. I'm not, you know, into all this stuff. Lava, whatever his name is, the little Lava boy was groomed at like 13, 14. The Lava boy came out and said that he wasn't groomed. I felt like when he said that, Mr. Beast or somebody from the camp paid him off. You know what I'm saying? So he was saying that he wasn't groomed and that, you know, social media needs to leave Mr. Beast and Chris alone. But then this other dude came out and was like, no, they were talking very sexual to us. So basically what happened is there was a Discord server. This was like back in 2019, 2018. All of these young dudes were young. They were all like between the ages of 13 to 16. And so back when this Ava person was Chris, he would be in there talking very sexual to these kids, you know, like making peen jokes and stuff like that. And, you know, saying all types of very inappropriate stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things you don't, you don't joke with, with children. And when I hear people making real sexual jokes around kids, that can be seen as a form of grooming. Because why are you talking about peen and, and coochie and, and whatever around minors and you're grown in your 20s? Then he would just straight up upload porn. He would be uploading porn onto this server. And so, you know, and when you're young and you look up to people, right? Because these are, these are all children. So you want to be a part of something. So they're sitting here running this, this server. They're not even getting paid for Mr. Beast and crew. They're running all this stuff. They have all these little private rooms. And this man is clearly grooming them. So this lava person came out and said that he wasn't groomed. Keep him out of it. Mr. Beast and Chris were so nice to him. But now this other boy, Nathan, clocked his teeth and brought receipts. So it's kind of them going back and forth just to get y'all up to speed. So let me... Okay, part, it's, it's a lot of... It's a lot. Okay, so this is part two. I'm just okay. Christos. Here we go. So we're gonna we're gonna watch this, so that way y'all can get caught up. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Closer here. Chris Dyson, Chris Dyson from, Mr. from Mr. Beast used me and manipulated me and did very inappropriate things with me while I was about 15 years old. I was actually friends with Lava GS at the time, who is the main victim of Chris that everyone has been talking about these last few days, who claims he isn't a victim, but we all know he is, and we all know he probably got paid off. Not only that, but he's also under an NDA from when he worked for Mr. Beast Gaming for two years. And he tried to get me to join Mr. Beast Gaming himself, Lava. He's the one who actually sent me the contract and tried to get me to sign the NDA. At which point I ended our friendship because I knew they were just trying to silence me. Me and him were both initially involved in running Chris's Discord server, helping him uh, set up his Twitch streams and moderating them. Nate's calling me. Hey, what's up? You're on stream. Oh, you, you just leaked your address. Please end your stream as well as other technical back-end things that he needed help with. This Discord server that we were a part of had about 10 people in it, most of whom were minors. I'm not sure how they got in there, other than me and Lava. He won a giveaway, and Chris invited him after that. And Chris invited me after I saw one of his tweets asking for help setting up a Gary's Mod server for the 10 million subscriber Mr. Beast video. This turned into us having lots of private conversations with Chris and playing video games with him for hours on end. Not only did we do a lot of unpaid work for him that he promised he would pay us for, he would also frequently bring up sexual topics that was definitely not appropriate to bring up around 15, 16 year olds, especially with him being like, I don't know, 20, 21 years old. He would even go as far as linking me several different corn and hentai videos throughout the time of me talking with him. Not only that, but he had an NSFW bot in his Discord server before he made it public. So when it was just a private server, uh, his little circle of miners, and he would use this NSFW bot to spam different corn images, corn images, um, alongside all these 15 year olds. He would also frequently call me dad and daddy as well as the others, which I guess we all kind of just took as a joke at the time. You have to think this is someone who 
we looked up to at the time, we idolized, we thought was the coolest person in the world, so they couldn't really do any wrong in our eyes. But looking back, I was definitely uncomfortable uh, at being called Even just thinking about it now, I was definitely uncomfortable uh, at being called daddy by a 20 year old. Um, and it, even just thinking about it now, it's just uncomfortable. This server later went public and became his official Discord server. But before it did, he had me and Lava spend multiple days scrubbing this Discord server clean of all of the N words he had sent in it, as well as his friends, as well as deleting the NSFW channels and making sure no one could see that he was spamming corn to minors. This story is so much bigger and runs so much deeper than any of you really realize. So if you want to hear more and you want a part two, let me know. I was okay, let me come on here real quick. So one of the things that bothers me with this situation is that, do you guys see how censored the internet is? We're trying to protect children. We can't even use words like porn. We have to sit here and use words like corn just to be able to tell our stories, just to be able to get information out there. It's, it's sickening. They should be able to tell their story in full context and not have to use these weird words like essay and corn and it's, it's just sickening. So um, after he told the story, the lava kid tried to say that this dude was lying and you know, this wasn't true. Oh yeah, and then Chris and Mr. Beast, they're also racist. So they were also in there saying the N word, dropping n bombs so then they forced the kids to go in there and delete all the porn delete all the n word stuff um off of the server before they made it public because this was a private discord because when you're first setting up your discord um it takes a while to set it up even when i set up my discord it took a while i think it was like me rejoice it was like maybe about four of us that were setting everything up when we initially started the discord and it took us about a full two weeks to get everything set up but we were literally just in there setting up stuff. There was no side weird conversations, none of that stuff. And then once everything is set up, like the rooms and all that, then you make it public. So they had been in this Discord server for a while, but it was just Chris, Mr. Beast, and like all these kids that they hired. So once they wanted to make it public after the initial setup, he had these kids go in and delete the conversations and everything. So he thought. So when Lava came out and said that this young man was lying. Chris Dyson from Mr. Beast. You when he came out and said this young man was lying, another dude named Cookie of God, he kept the receipts because something in his spirit told him that this was not right. Even as a kid, Cookie of God, it was, they were young, like 13, 14. Something told him that it's weird that they're trying to delete all this. Like if, like if, it, if this is okay for us to engage with you privately, then why can't everybody see it? Because you know, that's how kids think. If this is okay, then what's the big deal? So I guess even as young as he was, he felt like something wasn't right. So this young man backed up everything that, that Mr. Beast and Chris were telling them to delete. He downloaded everything. Everything. When I tell you this young man is the, the living embodiment of keeping fucking receipts, he kept everything. Chris server logs, uh, server stav logs, dank me mods and there's a bunch of stuff on, it's kind of hard for me to read but there's like different conversations he screenshotted everything um let's see here cookies of god that's how i know the bot won't delete this message this was a few days ago lol yeah i'm searching for that and i noticed it so basically he's showing the chat where they're all in there talking about you know because in the server like in the Discord server, you can do searches for certain words. So basically they're talking about how they're looking up certain words like the N-word and, you know, sexual words so they can delete it. So that boy Lava was lying because this is the whole conversation of the young mods talking about deleting all this stuff that Mr. Beast and Chris told them to delete. Uh, this is Nathan here. Let us know before you delete any kind of meme or shit because I want to archive it first. Cookie says, yeah, I didn't delete any of the images with it since. I just searched for it and some looking and some really old looking messages. So just more conversations with these young boys. So now Nathan comes back and he's clocking Lava's tea. Okay, so this is when he comes back with the receipts. So we're going to listen to this. 
This is part two to yesterday's video of me talking about Ava Chris Tyson and what they did to me when I was 15 years old. This video has all the proof in it, all the receipts, and all the screenshots, thanks to an old friend of mine who was a moderator in Chris's Discord server at the time, Cookie. Now, Cookie actually went ahead and downloaded logs of all the individual channels on Chris's server before it went public, knowing that this was kind of being covered up, and he kept the logs of it for himself. He actually reached out to me here on Twitter, and I'm going to provide a lot of the screenshots backing up the claims that I made that Lava refuted. For example, I made a claim that there was an NSFW channel in the server where Chris would spam corn. Here you can see Chris talking about locking down the NSFW channel to true gods and anointed only. Um, by the way, this is in 2019. I was a true god and I was a minor. Not only that, but you can see me right below it, Nathan.RTX saying, this is a bad idea. So even I knew as a kid that this was a really bad idea. Here is Lava himself talking about starting the commencement of cleaning the server, word for word. I said he was talking about scrubbing the server. He says that never happened. Here you can see him talking about it as well as me and uh, Cookie himself talking about it. I just want to make this video real quick, uh, disproving some of the claims that Lava refuted. Uh, and showing that they actually are true, but I actually have thousands of Discord messages to go through in these logs that I was just provided by Cookie. Shout out to him for giving me them, and I'm going to be going through them and posting an update video with some more proof. Okay, so now he was posting even more receipts. Uh, there's like even more stuff here. So then somebody today or maybe yesterday. Let me see here. Okay, so now this is Lava. So after they clocked Lava's tea, he came out and finally admitted that he was wrong. So he says this, based on recent screenshots and messages, I, I would like to say this statement about the Discord. This was five or six years ago and I thought I had a good memory of the situation, but I was wrong. After reading the chat logs, this stuff is inappropriate and wrong. I spoke based on my memory of the situation. I still do not remember these conversations, but they definitely happened. These conversations should not have happened with people at that age that I was at the time. I strongly condemn them. I still believe I was not a grooming victim, but these conversations should not have happened with me or any other minor in this discord. Okay? So once they brought the receipts, now he has no choice but to be like, well, damn, I can't keep saying that you didn't do anything. Yes, tiny violin on that ass. You know what I'm saying? So now, today, this is the latest that's going on. Give me just a second. So they found even more stuff. So they have a whole internet called Chris Cot Leaks. They had it on, like, I think Reddit and a few other sites. When you click on it, He's actively, Mr. Beast or some on his team, they're going through taking everything down. So everything keep, like every time they post a page, it goes down. They post something to show the receipts, it goes down. So they're actively trying to hide this information. So we're going to go ahead and listen to what he has to say real quick here. Ava Chris Tyson's Discord server leaks are getting dropped in a little less than an hour, but I have a couple screenshots that are going to be included in that that I wanted to show you guys right now. Here we have Chris complaining about the hentai bot not sending gay hentai um, and asking Lava if if he's the one if he's the one who did it. Now keep in mind this server was scrubbed clean before it went public, um, and this is the result of after the great cleansing, as Lava called it. So there's not going to be an insane amount of evidence against Chris in these logs as much as there should have been. Uh, due to the fact that the great cleansing, in Lava's words, happened. He also says here that he wants a free NSFW uh, channel, whatever that means. A lot of people have been saying, I just don't know how to take a joke. Um, here's an example of something that I know was a joke, but is still wrong and not appropriate to be sending uh, in a channel with minors in it. Um, they say, just put my nudes in NSW. Obviously, it was a joke. Um, they never did, to my knowledge. Uh, however, not a funny joke. Here we have Chris talking about how they finally locked down the NSFW channel to gods. However, I was a god and I was a minor at the time. So I'm 
let me come in real quick. You notice his name is Chris, the meme God, and they also call these young children gods. And this man's name is Mr. Beast, but y'all want to keep saying it's nothing spiritual. Everybody's reaching. It's just the name, Beauty and the Beat. No. Why are they calling themselves gods? This is even more spiritual than y'all can even comprehend. For y'all who are not understanding that name, Mr. Beast. I'm not sure what the point of locking it down was if you're going to lock it down to a role that also has minors in it. Because Lava was in that role too. Um, but then in the same message, they say, or should I open it back up? And I'm like, I don't know where this confliction was coming from between leaving the NSFW channel open or closed. Um, it's even to me at the time, it was pretty obvious to me that it should at least have the 18 and up warning on it. But these are 500,000 messages. So if you can help us go through all of them, post any screenshots of anything problematic you find, um, or anything that just kind of rubs you the wrong way because we have not gone through even a small percentage of it. Um, we're just getting it out to you guys as fast as we can. So this young man has been putting himself at risk, trying to get the information out there. And like I said, when you click on the link, so probably end up deleting his Twitter page, you know, soon. But yeah, when you click on it, like they'll have different links, everything just keeps getting took down. So um, it's, it's insane. So now, for the people, again, this is why you gotta, you know, watch y'all's community. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. It was incorrect, misinterpreted. So he's dropping. Okay, there was some type of cease and desist. Mr. Beast, okay, this was five hours ago. Mr. Beast is handing out cease and desist letters. Send me a cease and desist, and here's my official response to that. Damn, he's playing music. Let me see. Let me try and mute it. He's playing music. See if he has any, if he says anything else. Okay, so he's basic. He's been blasting Mr. Beast about like the shows, like the game shows that he puts on, being fraudulent. So it's a lot going on. So now, um, for y'all claiming this is your fellow trans sister, uh, let's see what his biological sister has to say about him because his sister, uh, Chris Tyson's sister, has come out and she's blasting him. So she's saying this. I'm his sibling, he, and yes, I use the correct pronouns, told me that he got fully aroused when he secretly stole my female clothes and put them on. He is deluded and disturbed and is 100% a fetish. He's a narcissist and professionals have told him he needs, to, he needs a full psych eval. That is coming from his blood sister. But y'all want to claim everybody and put them under the rainbow. And y'all got to vet some of these people. And there was even, there's a group called uh, Gays Against Grooming. They have been calling out Chris for years and saying that he's trying to use the, the trans community for his fetish, that he's not really trans. He just likes to play dress up. He was wearing his sister's clothing, sniffing her panties or some shit and getting aroused. That is his own sister blasting him. Even his own sister calls him a he. And then, in typical fashion, he also seems to have an issue with women. So back when he was Chris, in 2017, he said this. This is bullshit. I grew up working in the fields at 12 when my sisters got to sit in the AC all day. Fuck these privileged feminists. So again, you see that women-hating energy. But yet he wants to wear dresses like a woman, but he hates women. Um, feminists are rethinking their whole equ uh, equity theme. These fucking entitled feminist shits are getting on my nerves. Seriously, just stop being cunts. It's not that hard. Somebody else wrote, fuck feminist. So, but now he wants to be a woman. Interesting. And there's a whole thread here where they're kind of, this is when he was with his wife and the baby. And so now, with all of this going on, I've been kind of concerned, like, 
where is the wife and baby in all this? Because if he's doing all this to other people's children, I hope his own child is okay. Well, now people are posting videos of TikTok saying that this is what he's doing to his baby. This is insane. There's pictures like this that have serviced online. Chris Tyson is literally putting fitting high heels on his son. Saying, oh yeah, Tucker chose these shoes. And we all know the real story. He chose them for him. It's pretty obvious. Just imagine when he grows up and he realizes that his dad, who is masculine, millions of dollars, was famous worldwide, wanted to transition into his mother. Everybody makes different paths in life, you know. But I just feel like he might have a hard future, which it, it's only if people, you know, give that to him. Of course, he can overcome this. What do y'all think about this in the comments? Let me know. I wouldn't put high heels on a girl that age. I wouldn't put high heels on a two-year-old girl that age. Why would you put it on a boy? No boy is going to choose those shoes. Little girls probably wouldn't even choose those shoes unless you make them an option. Something is going on. Something is not cleaning the buttermilk. So again, this is not me being transphobic. This is me having common sense and discernment. Like, nah, something has been up with that dude from day one. Because like I said, I never liked how it went about. People that I've talked to, who have gender dysmorphia and stuff like that, they've been going through that for years. They've been dealing with stuff for years. It's not some, hey, surprise, you know what I'm saying? This is who I am. I'm leaving my wife and kids. The, the whole way they went about it never sat well with my spirit. You know what I'm saying? And now more and more stuff is coming out about this situation. It's extremely disturbing. So, of course, Jimmy, a.k.a. Mr. Beast, he's trying to separate himself from the situation. So he came out with an apology uh said that you know he's um he let go of chris but other people are saying that chris knows where all the bones are buried you want to watch this video so i bought a lot of receipts so an, an ex-employee of mr beast he was fired a few months ago but other ex-employees they've been coming out saying stuff too and they're saying that mr beast did not want to fire chris because chris has been problematic and chris has threatened that if i if y'all get rid of me I'm putting all y'all out there. So we're gonna watch this real quick. I'm outside Mr. Beast's studio right now. Here's a cornfield, I'll explain that tomorrow. Um, I've just been driving by looking uh, to, to see, you know, is there an FBI raid going on, what's happening? My name's Dawson. I worked at Mr. Beast from February to May of this year, 2024. Chris is the, the tip of the iceberg. And when Jake the Viking says, Mr. Beast knew, yeah, Mr. Beast knew. Um, I heard many times that Ava, Chris Tyson, is a major liability, but they can't get rid of her because she's already threatened legal action and she knows too much. And when all this information comes out about everything that she knew, everything other people know, I promise you on everything Mr. Beast has done. Amazon, if you can get your money back, get your money back. Honey, when I tell you this is some messy white people tea, it is a lot going on right now. He's one of the biggest, well, he is. He's the biggest YouTuber. He's the biggest YouTuber. So... Right now, he is probably stressed the hell out because uh, his little friend about to fuck up all his, all his coins. But um, so now, it's come out today. So Parlo, um, he just did this. We're going to watch this video where he's saying the Mr. Beast drama hit an all-time low. Okay, so we're going to watch this. He broke this down. Beast actively lied to millions of people in regards to his response to the damning allegations involving Ava Chris Tyson's consumption of lovely content and inappropriate content around minors. In his response, he claimed that he only just knew about Chris's degenerative behavior, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Meaning essentially, Mr. Beast lied in his response saying that he just became aware of Chris's actions in the past few days, when in reality, he knew all along. 
Just as of recently, 500,000 Discord logs regarding Mr. Beast and Chris Tyson's old Discord server have officially been released to the public, and it shows that not only was Mr. Beast a high rank in this server, but also himself engaged in inappropriate discussions around minors along with Chris Tyson. And for any Mr. Beast defenders that want to try and drastically belittle the situation, let me just share some of the wondrous conversations and media that this server contained, that Mr. Beast himself was associated with up until he decided to leave three years later in 2020. Now Chris Tyson admits himself that he believes the average age of users who operated this server were about 14 years of age. More logs even show other users who admitted that they were underage too. Nathan, who is someone who was entrusted with a high rank in this server and were part of the staff team, even self-reports stating that he took a new of himself when he was a minor, therefore admitting that he committed a crime. Yet right after these messages as well, talking about C users in this server discussed sharing news with one another in private DMs. So whether you like it or not, you have to admit that this server was essentially facilitating the discourse of C and the facilitation of this disgusting behavior. Also keep in mind that Chris Tyson had a NSFW channel which was part of this server that people with specific ranks could access. That meant that literally any miners he had as staff could literally access and view this channel and see all the degenerate content that was posted in it. Chat logs also show how there was no verification needed and Chris Tyson couldn't give less of a shit about it being accessed by miners in this server because quote unquote he isn't the kid's parents and the internet is full of porn anyway so who cares that they're viewing a little bit of lovely. Keep in mind, Chris Tyson was a legal adult as well throughout all of this. He was at least in his early 20s to mid 20s when the server died. More screenshots also show how apparently Chris Tyson sent notes of himself in that channel, as well as openly posting feed pictures of himself in it, which is disgusting as well considering how miners were viewing this. Even worse was that members in this server started discussing Chris Tyson's PP size, and Mr. Beast, who was a legal adult at the time, decided to join in in this inappropriate discourse and started to vouch that Chris Tyson the file had a big penis and keep in mind Mr. Beast was 19 years old at the time of stating this he was a literal legal adult so I don't want to hear any of these excuses that he was a dumb teen because at 19 you're legally culpable for your own actions and he was fully aware of the consequences as well and the conversation continues by people stating how they would put Chris Tyson's right after Mr. Beast stated this. And these people could have well been minors, and Mr. Beast literally did nothing about it. I also want everyone to process how this proves that Mr. Beast was complicit in the degeneracy that this server had, and prove that Jimmy knew the inappropriate behavior that Chris Tyson had towards members of the server that he literally admitted on his own volition were most likely minors. There is absolutely no excuse for either of them, and it's even worse for Jimmy because he lied in his public statement, claiming that he just knew and was just made aware of Chris Tyson Tyson's actions, because he can literally be seen here actively engaging in degenerate conversations in this server many years ago. So this meant that Mr. Beast essentially kept all of this silent until he was actively called out himself, and he only ever made a response because this was all hurting his PR and his brand. If he had any sense of a moral f***ing compass, he would have called out Chris Tyson for this years ago, but he didn't. He kept this under wraps for as long as possible. Chris Tyson can also be seen speaking about lollies, and the NSFW channel can even be seen having what seems to be lot content posted to it with a user who had access to this server being called cookies who was a 16 year old minor at the time and saw this content chris tyson can also be seen fawning over a 14 year old who we can presume to be bad baby as well as mr beast linking bad baby's account too mm, i wonder why you did this chris tyson even linked shadman's website which was known to be full of c content and even more screenshots came out of mr beast having the poster that Chris Tyson bought right behind him in certain videos he took. I just don't want to do it. And also, Chris, my roommate, moved out, so that doesn't really help either. So... And this also proves how Chris Tyson was yet again a massive fan of Shadman, who's quite literally a person who drew CSAM content and is most likely a file. Even more screenshots... Okay, yeah. So I'm not going to play his whole video, but he really breaks it down. But, um... Yeah, so the whole situation right now with Mr. Beast is getting really serious. Um, and the Shadman guy, I went to go do research because I had never heard about him. But I guess he died a few years ago from cancer. But if you do research on him, he was like some, like, I think he was a pedo. He would make pictures of, like, young kids. Like, he he made a picture of Keemstar's daughter at the time. She was seven and other, like, young kid YouTubers. He'd make pictures of them and basically um, 
in like real pornographic ways. And Mr. Beast had one of those pictures in his videos, in his early videos. So it's like, why would you have a picture from a man that makes, you know what I'm saying, child pornography artwork of like influencers, like kid influencers online. And Keemstar's daughter wasn't even an influencer. That was just his daughter. So I, I think the rabbit, yeah, he died. They said he died from cancer, um, maybe like a year or two ago. Cause I had never heard of this man until I was like researching everything. So it just seems like it's a lot of things right now that's tied to Mr. Beast and uh, Chris Tyson that's really disturbing. All the stuff that's coming out and especially if they were talking to minors in their Discord server in that way, it's not cool. It's not okay. And you know, Chris is coming out trying to apologize. I'm sorry, but isn't that a crime? I didn't know you could just simply apologize and move on. Like you're not supposed to be talking to minors in that way. And I feel like if he could talk to them in that way, and you know, there was even a conversation, you guys can, there's all types of videos breaking stuff down where Mr. Beast is on there confirming that Chris has a big peen. Why are you confirming that to children? So at this point, I think they were all in some type of sexual relationship. I think Mr. Beast, uh, Chris, they probably had messed around before. They're they're clearly bi, at, at the very least. You know what I'm saying? At the very least. Because I don't even understand, like, why is this type of conversation going on with... It's one thing for them to be talking like that to each other, but y'all don't even know these kids. You don't know if these kids are screen recording you. You don't know them. But, they, but that's the problem, is that a lot of times influencers get all of this power and influence and everything else, and then they just be on some other shit. So you gotta be really careful with who your kids are watching and just be like very, very mindful and talk to them because something with this whole situation is really disturbing. Not only with his name being called, you know, Mr. Beast, but that, you know, his best friend so-called transitioned and then now it's coming out that, oh, he was really, like his sister said, he's just a narcissist basically playing dress up and he's using this almost to like lure kids in, like to get them comfortable. Like, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a friend and we're just making these really cool videos for kids. And so it's a lot of stuff coming out. So I would suggest if you have kids or nieces and nephews that follow Mr. Beast and that whole channel, that y'all should really do your research into it because the stuff that's coming out is extremely disturbing. Yeah. Somebody called him bisexual beast. Yeah, something is going on. Especially with a lot of these like big mega influencers because what was it, like a year or two ago, it was James Charles and all his scandals, him going into like people who are minors sliding into their DMs and everything. And now we have all this going on with um, Mr. Beast's friend, Ava Chris. So the whole thing is extremely, extremely disturbing. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.